Hello folks, welcome to a new set of Hobby Nightmares. We won't be speaking too loudly today because people are around in the house doing certain bits and bobs, so I'll be keeping my voice to a minimum so I'm not disturbing their meetings and things that are going on. On today's episode, we will be talking about or hearing from a tournament goer who had a, shall we say, interesting encounter with a casual player at their local tournament. That should be cool later on. If you have any Hobby Nightmares, make sure you send them in to hobbynightmares at gmail.com that is there down below. Let's jump in, shall we? So, uh, Red says... Greetings, Mr. Exile. Call me Red. I have done. This is a hobby nightmare with a happy ending. Uh, which kind of happy ending are you talking about? If it's the other kind, then you probably shouldn't be talking about it. But anyway, this story starts with me being a Magic the Gathering player. Okay, so it's not going to be that kind of a happy ending then, because you're a Magic the Gathering player, and we all know, ain't nobody touching that. Just joking. Just joking. Magic players. Just joking. I made friends... With most of the regulars at the hobby store, I would play the weekly tournaments at. I would hang out more frequently during the week with the regulars and found out they played Warhammer Fantasy Battles. I had never heard of Warhammer or seen anything quite like it before. I was intrigued and one of the guys we will call Bobby, he comes up later in the story, did a small 1000 point demo game of 6th edition for me. It was fun, and I enjoyed playing the orcs and goblins, and thought their animosity rule was funny against this other army, in which he had vampire counts. Being in college and not having a good paying job, I couldn't really afford magic and Warhammer though. The owner of the store offered me a solution though. Being one of the top magic players, if I placed in top 3 instead of winning packs of magic gathering cards, he would give me more store credit to go towards Warhammer. That's cool. That's a cool workaround. Over time, I was able to get all of the orcs and goblins I needed for a full 2,000 point list. I built them and painted them, which I really enjoyed. One of the guys that played fantasy was a commission painter, and I really wanted a really good painted general for my army for my birthday. Uh, he asked if I wanted him to paint my uh, Gorbad Iron Claw. He did it for free, and it was really brilliantly painted. I was so happy to have such a good group of friends at the hobby store. Fast forward a few years, and I learned that my uncle was diagnosed with cancer. That's not good. He lived about five hours away from where I lived. I went to visit him as soon as I found out. He was pleased to see me. I stayed with him for about uh, a week, and it was, a, it was great being with him. I went back home, and a few months later, found out my uncle had passed away from cancer as he was in stage 4 of the cancer, and he had started treatment far too late. My aunt was devastated, and needed somebody there to help her emotionally. Being the stoic one in my family, after my father had died earlier in my life, I felt I could do the same for my aunt. Again, this is what I say about stoic people. If you want to be a leader, if you want to be the, the man of your family, if you want to make sure that people are looking up to you, and are, you know, allowing you to help them with their problems... Being the stoic one, being the one, the rock around which everything else flows, is a really good way to do that. People will pick up on it if you do it. Anyway, I packed up the essentials and just moved to help my aunt. And this is where the nightmare happened. I had my fully painted orcs and goblins army at my mother's house in foam in a large cardboard box. In a similar box, I had some older clothes I was going to throw out. I bet you know where this is going. Oh no... My mum called and asked if I was going to come pick up my clothes and models. I told her she could do me a favour and throw out the clothes, but I would be back the next weekend to get the rest of my things, including my models. Yeah, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I wouldn't trust my mother to, to take that. And uh, my mum knows how to take, uh, you know, instruction and things like that. I still wouldn't trust her. She doesn't know what Warhammer is, really. She doesn't know how much it means to me. I would just say, leave all my stuff there, please. I will adjudicate it when I get back. Do you know what I mean? Do not tell your mum. You know, throw out that bag there, but not that bag has got all my Warhammer models in it. They, she will throw out both. You know, even if, even if it's not malicious, she will do it by accident. She won't listen. She knows best. Quote, unquote, you know. Just say, don't touch my shit. 
You know, just leave it there. I'll sort it out when I come back. Anyway. She apparently misheard or didn't realise which box was which and threw out my models. I got to my mum's apartment and started packing up my things and saw one box remaining, thinking it was my models. I didn't think to check which box it was. I got back to my aunt's place and found out what had happened. It wasn't the end of the world to me knowing what had happened but with my uncle and I loved my mum so I wasn't terribly upset. I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> but then over there, that says more about me than it does about you. This is where things turned out good. Bobby from the old store had called me and told me his condolences from my uncle and asked how I was doing. I told him I was alright, but my mum had thrown out my models by accident. At this point, he looked online and found out a hobby store that sold 40k and had good reviews and their Facebook page had a large following that gave them praise for the staff and the hobby space. He called me back up and told me about the store. I went there and the owner of the store asked what I was into. I told him I had a fondness for Warhammer Fantasy but didn't have any models anymore. It was at this point he apologised to me, told me they had only a minimal selection of fantasy but there is a large following for 40k at the store. He asked me, he asked what I played in fantasy. I told him orcs and goblins. He pardoned himself for a moment, a moment as the phone rang. He came back to me and had his friends full of 40k orcs boxes. Enough for 2,000 points and a wide variety of kits as well. It turns out Bobby had called and let this owner know my story a few days before and the regulars and himself bought half the army and the owner told the regulars at this new store my story and they all pitched in to complete my army. I became a regular at this new store and have great friends here to this day. I'm sorry if this was rambling, but I'm glad to be a part of the community that sometimes looks out for each other. Thank you, Red. Cheers, man. Um, yeah, it does. And you will find this a lot in that people who generally go through or genuinely go through terrible things, you do get support in the hobby. Don't let anybody tell you don't. And don't let anybody sort of talk down about the hobby either. You know what I mean? It is an amazing place to come if you are really, really, really struggling. There are a lot of cool people here. So, yeah, jump in. Um, if I'm being, like, more uh, wound in at this point in a video, it's because I've got a wisdom tooth coming through, and it's painful. And I'm pushing through it to do these videos because, you know, again, it's near Christmas. I know a lot of you will be a bit on, on a downward slope because maybe you're alone at Christmas. Maybe uh, other things are going on. Maybe you work in retail. My God, my heart goes out to you if you do. Um... Saying that, you know, I, I, I thought I should just push through. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world. I can take some painkillers and be fine, or at least on an even keel. Um, I have a sweet spot with painkillers, like uh, mainly an hour or two after I've taken them. It really does hit the sweet spot and the pain goes away completely for a few hours, which is quite nice. So anyway, moving on. Uh, Gracious Spank says, By the way, if you want to uh, uh, contribute to the channel, subscribe. It would really help me out. Gracious Spank says, when I first read your name, man, I thought it said something else. <laughs> he says, Howdy North. On the channel, you have covered a lot of stories of tournament players playing in casual events and games before ruining it for everybody involved. Well, I have a similar story, but on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. This story is about a player named Alan, who was, I swear, the most pompous and overbearing Care Bear law wanker I have ever come across in my life. At my local store, we played events, and there were two types, competitive and casual. They were literally called that, and both were treated with equal importance, for the most part, with decent prizes awarded for both too. The casual events mostly covered campaigns and other cool things in the store. A Dawn of War Dark Crusade style campaign map that was all the rage along at the time, along with a load of really fluffy lists. Lots of fun. I played over there whenever I felt like having an easy evening or afternoon, and lost most of my games. I am a very good competitive player. I am not even ashamed of saying that, but the different pace and power level of casual games always threw me off. Why? Because I played by casual rules like the rest of the lads and lasses did. 
and got my ass handed to me every time. I am not a casual player, and so they were able to squeeze all of the power out of their lists whilst having fun and it being narrative. I was barely able to keep up, but still had a blast each time I tried it. Yeah, this is something that isn't really covered quite a lot in hobby space. People tend to just automatically assume that tournament players are the best 40k players. But this is kind of what I also rub up against. I don't like that as a thing, because I don't think it's true. Most of the good 40k players I've come across have been very fluffy, fluffy players. They've been players who like fluffy lists, who like to tell a story on the tabletop, but are also very good at eking out every, every mo molecule of power from the list that they brought. That's a good 40k player, right? A good 40k player to me isn't somebody who math hammers together a list and smites you off the table at the top of turn one because they've managed to add some numbers together. That's not a good 40k player. Mainly because they're missing the most important rule of the entire game. Your opponent needs to have fun as well or you're not playing the game properly. If, you're, if you win a game and your opponent has not had a good time and it's your fault... Like, you know what I mean? You've gone out of your way to, like, win the game at top of turn one. Yeah, dude, uh, you're not a very good 40k player. Sorry. Like, you're not. You're just not a very good one. Um, you're good at maths, is what you are. You're good at maths, and you're good at creating really good lists, but you're not a very good 40k player. A good 40k player wins their game through skill and eking out all of the power through their army. Yep. Yeah. Knowing the codex very well. Yep. Yeah. But bringing a balanced list... That was meant to make sure that their opponent also has a good time. Right? That's a good 40k player in my eyes. And by the way, that 40k player still won the game. Right? That's a very, very, very good 40k player. If I can play you and have a good time even though I lose because you brought a balanced army and we, we hammered the living hell out of each other and you pull out a win through some sheer good tactics and moves on, on the tabletop, mate, you're a good 40k player. And we need more of you. If you're the kind of person who, who rocks up with an army and wins on the top of turn one, or at the very uh, the very most, the top of turn two, yeah, you're, you're good at building lists of Warhammer, but you're not a good Warhammer player. Alright? Cool. So, and I quote, We are heading into the end of 7th edition. And to celebrate the coming world-shattering 8th edition, our local store decides to do two big events. A competitive tournament and a casual one. Now, when I saw Alan sign up to the competitive tournament, I was dreading it a bit. He was the king of the casuals at the store and would regularly stop other people's games to explain what was going on in the lore during the game and would generally refuse to let games happen that did not make sense in the lore. He would come over waving his arms like, no, stop, sorry guys, and tell them to play with other people. He was a friend of the store owner, so was generally allowed to, to get away with this, but my god, yeah, this is, this is awful. This is the other side of the coin, dude. I've just gone off on tournament players, you know, not being that great at the game, if you look at the game for what it is. This guy is also a, a massive, massive douche. What a douche. Like, th th this guy... Why do that? Let people enjoy their hobby. Shut the fuck up, right? Nobody cares about what death world that one certain guard regiment comes from that you're talking about there. Mate, let people get on with the game. through the l And they will explore the lore on their own. You're not always right. Everybody knows a guy like this, by the way. Everybody knows a certain, you know, rules or lore king... In your local area. Who will generally tell other people that they're wrong all times. You know, give give their opinions as if they're facts on the law. Which has no facts, by the way, because it's 40k. And it has no facts in the law. Everything is canon all the time. It's weird. But it is what it is, right? So, they come in and they give you these rules. And, and, and they get very arsy if you, if you don't do something that's fluffy. Like, if you go with a... A shooty world eaters list. I don't know why you would, but if you did that, they would absolutely lose their shit. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, I once had a guy at my local GW who literally didn't like me playing anybody but demons if I was a Grey Knight player. He'd be like, no, no, you wouldn't fight them. Sorry, you wouldn't fight them. Yeah, I know, but I want to have a good game of 40k. Go fuck yourself. You know, they're everywhere. 
These guys are everywhere. They are an absolute phenomenon in the hobby. Um, some people take it far, far, far too seriously, unfortunately. Anyway. And I quote, He was also a bit of a game bully. He would beat all the casuals as he rarely played by their rules, instead bringing quite powerful combinations and just dominating the space. When he signed up to the competitive tournament, I knew this great white shark in Allen was about to get into the water with about 15 megalodons. <laughs> Alright. Now, this was a sweaty tournament. I have no problem admitting that. Each army was made up of a few formations as they were the most broken things in the game at the time. The best of these, in my opinion, was the most vaunted and dreaded Skyhammer formation. Essentially, the Space Marines in this formation would deep strike onto the battlefield and whatever they shot at was immediately pinned, which was crippling in 7th edition. If you were pinned most of the time with most armies, you had to roll a 6 on a d6 to do anything. Most others in the tournament who were Marine players were using this formation or three times because this was an all day 3000 point 3 hour a game tournament. You were not supposed to table people but take certain points on the battlefield and hold them as long as you could. I used one sky hammer formation with my iron hands and then a normal marine list that was very close combat focused around that. So I was more balanced than most. I guess a lot of the casual players had rubbed off on me or something. My tactic was to weather the fire in the first turn and then hit Skyhammer and pin the enemy in place whilst my close combat units closed the distance to annihilate them. That's good. Good tactics. I like that. Yep. Yeah, cool. Cool. The thing is, with formations in 7th edition, they were literally only there so that we could sell really, really shitty model combinations that people normally wouldn't buy at the end of an edition. Right? Games Workshop knew that 8th edition was going to be a seismic shift, and so they wanted to shift as many of the old kits as they could, and to do that, they put them inside of really powerful formations. Essentially, one plug in and, and win the game formations, right? You plug it in, win the game. No problem, right? And everything became an, an arms race. So if you had two people in your group who had formations, you all had to start using them. It was a genius ploy. A, an evil genius ploy. To get more money out of you. And it worked, unfortunately. Anyway, moving on. And I quote, It worked well in the first game, with me, build, with me beating a Dark Eldar list that was hampered in their speed by the Skyhammer coming down to the point I was actually catching his best units with my close combat Terminators. It was a slaughter. But the opponent of that game, David, had a good time, and so did I. Weirdly, David would, would, would learn from this and actually win the entire tournament with a 2 and 1 record, but with a lot of stolen objective points thanks to his sheer speed and keeping people at arm's length. In my second match, I faced Alan and groaned inwardly. He was seething already, as he had been beaten in his first game in what he said was an unfair and sweaty matchup against a Chaos Space Marine list. Chaos Space Marines, by the way, at the end of 7th, were one of the most underpowered armies, even with their crummy formations. He brought Eldar, and they had some pretty powerful combinations in themselves. He had two formations in his army, but I forget what they did. I will be honest, the Skyhammer formations absolutely tore him a new arsehole. I discovered something that day. Seeing somebody go so beside themselves angry really does sap the energy out of a room, and it kind of ruined the game for me. I don't want to ruin your day, dude. Yeah, I, I get that, man. I get that, but you still have to play the game. As the game went on, he got more and more irate as I held him in place with Skyhammer and generally pummeled his Eldar into gemstone-coloured paste. He lost the battle 17 points to 2 in a landslide, and the entire time was pointing in my face and telling me I was filthy for bringing such lists and playing for blood. He told me the Iron Hands would not even have an army with no vehicles in it, and that really I should be docked points for bringing a list 
that does not even fit into 40k lore just to gain a profit in the game at his expense. In the end, I kind of snapped back and told him, and I quote, Dude, this is a competitive tournament. I play all the time in your casual tournaments and lose because I'm not good at casual play. Like me, maybe this just isn't your thing. Maybe you're like me, because casual really isn't my thing, but I do enjoy it. He didn't like that. Instead, he launched into a tirade on how I was trying to goad him and that all competitive players were fucking cancer. Cheers, bud. I picked up my models and moved on to my next opponent. This is not the end of the tale. He still had one game to play against Mikey. Mikey was a sadist. Completely. With a sharp tongue for those who tried to rile him up. He generally kept to himself and was nice to be around. He was not one of these weaponized autism guys who say nasty stuff for effect because they think it makes them funny or edgy. He was a nice guy unless you went after him and Alan did. I was playing over the other under- end of the store and so missed most of their game but I could hear the reeing coming from the other side of the place as I lost my own game to a lovely Imperial Guard army. Mikey had lost his first game and won his second. He had two Skyhammer formations and was in no mood for mercy with the winner's prize within his reach. He absolutely smashed Alan from pillar to post and smiled at him the entire time as Alan gave a rather expletive-filled TED talk on the evils of tournament players. At this point, he was even starting to rile up other players around him who were just must have been thinking to themselves, if you hate tournament players so much, dude, why the fuck are you here? In the end, I heard Alan shout, just fuck off, at the top of his lungs, which made the store go silent. Mikey leans across the table, a big smile on his face, and says, and I quote, Remove yourself from my table, filthy casual. If you hate me so much, get fucking better. Unquote. And with that, the game was won as the store owner, Luke, called a drastic halt to all games, we were at three hours anyway, and started totting up points. I came 5th place out of 16, cool, Mikey came 3rd, and I'll give you a wild fucking guess as to who came in 16th out of 16. He chucked his wooden spoon prize, a literal wooden spoon with his name on it, in the bin as he left the store. Sigh. Thanks North, Spank. Okay, this was a really good example of how not to act at at a tournament. You need to know what you're going into. Not all tournaments are going to be the same or, or, or created equally. Do you know what I mean? Um, let me take a, sw- a swig of tea here. One sec. Mm. But I'm going to be honest with you, dude. You absolutely need to know what you're getting into. Because tournament players are there to have a good time, right? As much as I say, look, if, if you annihilate somebody at the top of your turn, you know, you're not a very good Warhammer player. I, st- I stand by that opinion right but that doesn't mean the way you play is invalid it means you're not good at the game the way that it's said and laid down in the book right but you are good at the games you play if you play competitive 40k and you play for blood and you play to wipe somebody out of the top of turn one mate all power to you if you're in a group that also does that if they also do that and they have a good time doing that mate fill your boots have a good time i have nothing against you right absolutely you're a really good tournament player or you're really good at competitive play i don't think that's where the real hobby lies but that doesn't mean that the way you play is automatically discounted as the wrong way to do it have fun doing what you want to do in my opinion if you try and wipe somebody out straight away from the tabletop yeah you're not that good of a warhammer player all right you're a very good tournament player but you're not a good warhammer player the two different things, in my opinion, which is why I don't attend very many tournaments. I know it's not for me, right? But that's fine. It doesn't have to be for me. You guys enjoy what you do. But do not go to a tournament and try and ruin people's fun by trying to make them play the game your way. That's just as bad, 
just as bad as somebody coming into a narrative event and bringing their tournament one, you know, one size beats all bullshit into a narrative event. It's exactly the same way. It really is. So please, please, please know what you're getting into. People like to play the hobby in different ways. All right, cool. I love you all long time. I will speak to you tomorrow for another video. Yeah, and I'll see you then. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Oh, by the way, I'm going to the cinema tonight to see Die Hard. Hot damn. I'm looking forward to that. Love you all. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll speak to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye now.